do not take rejections personally. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. And today I'm very excited to have Karol Blazinski as my first ever invitational guest speaker on here. Karol, pleasure to, for having you here and thank you for being on. Thank you for your time. Yeah, hi Taka, hey everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me, really excited. Yeah, so before we get into anything, I'll just briefly introduce uh, how Karol and I met. And basically we went to the same school, but we never met at Purdue University, but rather we met at our first day at our internship at Airbus uh, at the badge office. So we were both in line together and that's how our friendship started. And to this day, yeah, we're very good friends, motivating each other in different aspects of life. And without further ado, let's, let's get right into it. <laughs> so if Karo, if you can share with the audience what, what you've been up to and a little bit about your life journey, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah, so as Taka said, my name is Karol um, and I'm from Poland. I'm turning 23 next month and I'm actually a senior in aeronautical and astronautical engineering at Purdue University. I'll be graduating in December and I'm really excited about that. Um, since I got into college, I was really motivated to get as much experience, like industry experience um, as possible. Um, I actually managed to work for over 16 months over the course of four years, so that is quite a lot uh, for a, uh, just like four years of, of studying a bachelor's degree. Um, so I was fortunate enough to get offers from Leonardo Helicopters and uh, Airbus Limited. Um, however, actually to get to that point when I was offered uh, those, those positions, um, I actually worked really hard in the college. So trying to involve in many activities, um, like sports activities, voluntary activities, research activities, lots of activities. Um, and actually those were really tough sometimes, but it's actually how you make friends in uh, American college. You first work on some research together, on some project, you uh, play soccer together, and then you actually meet those uh, people in the evening, you go uh, for a beer, and that's actually how you make friends in, in, uh, in American in college. Um, so when it comes to my personal hobbies or interests, I'm definitely a politics guy, except of course planes and all that uh, aer aeronautics stuff. Yeah. Um, I like to analyze news, uh, certain strategies politi politicians use. Um, however, I'm also a big sports fan. As you know, Taka, since we played together many times, I love soccer. I think it's uh -huh. the best sport in the world. Uh, but I also love running, I love tennis, swimming, um, snowboarding and ski jumping, although I've never done the last one and I'll probably never try it since it's too dangerous. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Thanks for the overview. So the specific experiences that you've had, so in the commercial aircraft industry at Airbus and also at Leonardo, could you maybe give us a little bit of an insider, what it's really like to work there? Yeah, um, it's, it really depends what you do. But if you're an engineer, it's, it's really, um, it really depends on you uh, how much responsibility you have and how much um, actual impact you are go going to have on certain projects. If, sure. If, if you're really ambitious and if you are a hardworking person who wants to climb the corporate ladder, um, you even if you're not a senior uh, management guy, you can have a lot of impact on what is actually produced by the company. Um, so for example, as um, in my position, 
when I was working for those companies. Thanks to my ambition and thanks to my hard work, I was given projects that had a little impact uh, on the future strategy of the company. Of course, it was not a crucial part, but it was um, a, a small percentage of, of work that actually depended on my performance. So the strategy of the company depends on your performance. And if you're ambitious enough, you'll get more and more responsibility and you'll have a bigger impact. I think it's, it's really important to, uh, to know that even if you're a part of a huge uh, corporation, which uh, employs like hundreds of thousands of people, um, you can still uh, do um, do really well, have an incredible impact and uh, feel uh, satisfied with what you're doing just because of your ambition, because of your hard work and um, how committed you are to achieving results. Sure, sure, sure. And I think a lot of people are interested in how we got to that stage, right? How we even got step our foot into, you know, for you, Leonardo and Airbus. Could you share a bit about your experience and give you know some practical advices for the you know, aspiring kids? Yeah. Uh, so when it comes to actually getting your job, uh, so some tips for for your job hunt. Um, I actually thought of free before we uh, recorded that video. Uh, I thought first of all highlight your strength and uh, your unusual experience. So, you know, when you go for a job for there are thousands of kids, uh, some of them are going to have higher GPA than you do. Some of them will have better um, job work experience than you do. Um, so to actually convince a recruiter that you're the guy that they want, you have to so that you're uh, some some difference so that you're not just a student with perfect uh transcript and perfect resume um show actually something personal show your uh, um strengths in, ter in terms of your personality mm -hmm. um and talk about something unusual i don't know if you're a ski jumper talk talk about that uh because it shows something unusual about about you and it shows something about your character that they're probably looking for. Um, second thing, uh, concentrate on companies you actually want to work for. Yeah. Um, I think it's very important. Uh, I have friends who applied every year to like two or 300 companies uh, and then they get a call back and they don't even know who they're talking to because they've never heard of the company. Um, and basically the callback is the last interaction with the company they ever have. So it's really important to do your research um, and apply to companies that you actually want to work for. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense because uh, you waste time and you waste the time of, of the recruiter or of the company. Last thing, i uh, talk about stuff that actually had an impact on you. Uh, so it's actually similar to the first point of highlighting your strengths, um, but do not talk about stuff that the recruiter, that you think the recruiter would like to hear about. So right. if you had some great experience, but you actually didn't learn anything and you just make up stuff um, that, uh, you know, to, to make that unusual experience amazing, they, they will realize that. And it just doesn't make sense. If it's about what you learn uh, about certain experience, not about the experience itself. So find something so you choose the experience that actually had an impact on you and talk about the lessons you learned during that experience that will be more impressive than the experience itself if that makes sense yeah for sure for sure i think in essence you know a lot of people tend to think 
what should I say that the recruiter wants to hear? And like you said, yeah. they're, they're going to be reviewing a thousand plus students, uh, right? Applicants. And so at the end of the day, being able to show who you are, the real you, I think it is very important, like you said. Exactly. I thought of three uh, soft skills okay. that, in my opinion, are crucial to actually um, be, be successful in any industry. So uh, for me, that would be leadership skills, teamwork, and communication. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you want to effectively pitch your ideas, uh, convince people to to your point of view or be perceived as a crucial part of your team you need those soft skills um you must own them it's like um okay you might be a very clever engineer you might be a an amazing uh, developer but mm. uh, you will not uh, be perceived as someone who's who's crucial to the team if you don't know how to actually communicate your ideas and how to pitch your ideas to the team to senior management or or your investors whoever whoever that is um so yeah i thought of those three and actually uh, i was thinking how i was working on those over the years right and, um the first thing i realized was that you should actually take comms class. Um, mm. I know uh, when you're in college, uh, when you take it during your freshman year, most likely you will think that is the worst class and the most useless class in, in your entire life. Yeah. But um, it's actually, w once you get to uh, some business meetings um, or you'll do actual like research projects for some companies, you'll realize that uh, those small things that you will never, that you would never think of mm -hmm. that you learned actually in those classes, like how you should title your slides or how you should introduce uh, your presentation. Um, you, you, some people have that natural skill, but um, I didn't. And uh, it definitely helped me just one COM 114 class uh, gave me those few things that I'm basically using every day now. Um, so that's one one way of getting those skills. Um, yeah. Another another good way is to take ownership of of some projects. So if you're working on a product, um, if it's for some research or if it's for a class, uh, just mm -hmm. Um, take take initiative and say that you will manage the time of the team that you will manage the tasks uh, it's actually gonna give you uh, a lot of experience even though you might think it's not that important um, the more experience you get with different people with different personalities the better leader you'll become in the future um, um, what I've done as well was reading a lot of books about mm -hmm. teamwork, about leadership to actually um, um, see what's the theory, what's the knowledge behind leadership. It's always good to uh, read about some strategies, try them out later um, when you work a project. Uh, I found that uh, very, very useful and very efficient since you sometimes get good ideas how to deal with certain people. When it comes to leadership, communication and teamwork, you know, I think a lot of people tend to think that, like you said, people just are naturals and they're good at communicating to people. They're just natural. Oh, he's a natural leader. But, you know, we can probably both agree that we've over the years you know, done small things that have ended up being relatively effective communicators than we were maybe four years ago, right? So I think what mm -hmm. both Carol and I would love to share with you guys as, as an audience is, is nothing, everything can be developed if you have the right mindset and if you are willing to, you know, put yourself out there, get, get stuff done. And there's, there's going to be a lot of failures on the way, but as long as you 
get back up and keep trying over the long period of time you'll become better and better and better what are some of the life lessons that you i think would think is valuable for some of the incoming or current college students um, to mm -hmm. take away i think the most important one is that uh, rejections will be part of your journey mm -hmm. no matter what um, like no one is good enough to get everything um, a, a good example is the founder of Alibaba uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him Definitely. he's like uh, he's a great businessman um, he's one of the richest guys in, in China yeah. but uh, he was like rejected 10 times from uh, business schools yeah, yeah from right uh, he was rejected from some high schools um, he didn't get some very basic jobs um, but he's one of the most I don't want to say successful because success is um, you measure success in a different ways but yeah. he's one of the richest um, guys in China and he's probably one of the best businessmen in China um, so it's really important to remember and find a way to actually deal with rejections. Um, it will it will come. Uh, there will be uh, some sad moments when you don't get the job you want or you don't get into project uh, that you really wanted to work on. But um, think of every rejection as an opportunity um, and actually use that opportunity to um, become better, uh, find gaps uh, why you were rejected and use that to use your, your value. Um, so that's that's the first lesson mm -hmm. I learned over, over those uh, past four or five years. Yeah. Um, second one is uh, actually keep your uh, routine circuit discipline um, your value uh, can either increase or decrease uh, like a stock it's never it's never constant if you if you work systematically uh, on your on your routines on your on your body or on your mind um, your value is gonna increase but when you stop it's constantly gonna decrease over over the period when you don't work so just be sure to if you need vacations of course that's normal and that's also helping your body but uh, keep your routines work systematically and your value is going to constantly increase mm -hmm. um, and the last one is actually the one i uh, learned recently maybe a year or two years ago okay. um, or the world and I don't mean like physically but I mean uh, that the un no degree or university will prepare you to be the best so if I'm stuck aerospace engineer I uh, want to explore business world I want to explore communication world um, I need different skill set to actually be the best so uh, explore uh, different industries, uh, explore different ideas, explore different models uh, sure. that will definitely help you become the best, uh, work on uh, and will help you to actually keep your uh, disciplines routine because you might find a, like a side passion that you will want to develop uh, and it will give you some uh, excitement in your life. So if I was actually to uh, wrap it up in one sentence, uh, I would say, uh, remember your value, make sure to work on it constantly, mm -hmm. um, and do not take rejections personally because they are to come. So I think that's like something that would summarize those, those lessons and what I always keep uh, in the back of my mind yeah amazing bro i think that was a very concise way of putting what we just talked about over the past 30 or so minutes and i i really hope that the audience 
here is able to take a couple of things from Carol. Obviously, he's walked through the four years of college experience. So if you ever want to reach out to him, um, I, I, I hopefully you're okay with this, but I'll, I'll put the <laughs> uh, link, reach out to him on LinkedIn, and I'll put that in the yeah, great. description um, on the channel. Jeśli wam się podobało, to dajcie lajka, subskrybujcie. Naprawdę warto, możecie się tutaj bardzo dużo dowiedzieć. Let's go, thank you guys. I hope uh, he said something nice about the channel and uh, <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Ciao.